Pass back yesterday's quiz. So is the speed increasing or decreasing at, at, at this exact moment in time? Well, <coughs> since they have the same sign, what? Speed. In the speed is increasing. So you should say the speed is increasing because the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign. If they have opposite signs, then the, the speed will be decreasing. So they want to they see the phrase they have the same sign. Velocity and acceleration have the same sign. So some of you weren't saying that. You're saying they're both negative, which is true, but you know what I mean? Then you got to infer that they have the same sign. But just, just go straight to the answer. They have the same sign. OK, that's, that's two points. Find the average velocity. OK, what does the word average mean to you? Average value. Average value. I told you guys that from the beginning. When you say the word average, it means average value. If they ask you for the average temperature, that means the average value of the temperature. So they want to know what is the average value of the velocity from 0 to 6. So what's the formula for average value? 1 over b minus a integral from a to b of the velocity dt. You write that down on your paper, you get one point. Because the velocity is, 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 is uh, defined in the problem. You can just write v. You don't even have to write v of t. You can just write v. You, that's one point. You want the other point, you math that on your calculator. 
Most of the time, that's what's going to happen. It's two points. One point for the integral, one point for the answer. So if you math nine this on your calculator, you get 1.949. Does it say to give units? No. Oh, don't you dare give units if they don't ask for it. Because if you volunteer wrong units... By the way, what, what would be the units of this? The units? So it would be, in this case, they don't really say, yeah? Units. I guess it would be units per, they don't even give you what time is. Units per time. So if that's the case, they're not going to ask you. Well, if it was meters and seconds, it would be meters per second because you're finding a velocity, right? The average velocity. It's a velocity. Meters per second. C, find the total. Oh, I, can't, I cannot believe some of us. <laughs> How do you find the total distance traveled from 0 to 6? You integrate from 0 to 6. The absolute value of the velocity dt. You write that integral down, you get one point. You map 9 on your calculator, you get the other point. 12.5. This should be two points in the bag. Some of us not even putting the absolute value. If you don't put the absolute value, you are finding the displacement. Total distance traveled, you gotta put absolute value. And then D, the last problem was worth three points. For from zero to six, the particle changes direction exactly. Okay, how do you figure out when the particle changes direction? Because we had a problem like that before. When the velocity changes sign, right? Because if the velocity is positive, the particle is moving to the right. When the velocity is negative, the particle is moving to the left. So we're looking for a change in sign and the velocity. So what you do is you take your velocity equation and you graph it. So if you graph the velocity on your calculator, I think it looked like this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. OK? Wherever it crosses, the, that's where it changes sign. So that is 5.196. So if you indicated that on your, if you just put 5.196 on your paper, you got one point. That's one point. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's on your number line. Why you, why you got minus three? I got minus two. I don't have the answer. I got the answer here. That's one out of three points. You still got two points to go. Okay. Now, it says find the position of the particle at that time. At this time, what is the position of the part? So this is what they want you to find, x of 5.196. That's, that's what they want you to find. Now, how can I do that? If, well, we know the velocity. They gave you the equation for the velocity. If you know the velocity, how do you find position? Antiderivative, except you cannot find the antiderivative of that. Some of you thought you did, but believe me, you can't. So what do you do when you can't? You do code red. You integrate the velocity from something to 0.5196. Zero. Yeah, why, why do you pick zero? Because they tell you x of zero is two. You have to use the information that, that's given. So according to code red, oh, this is just the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. What is this equal to? What's the antiderivative of velocity? Position. Position, plug in the top, plug in the bottom, subtract. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Hey, but this is two. You can map nine this on your calculator, right? Anyway, by the way, did you put the velocity in your calculator as y1 and the acceleration as y2? So when you do the math nine, you can just type in the y1 and the y2 instead of the whole mess. No, I just typed it. That's what I did. You know, especially how many times you got to do velocity here? So I just put in y1 instead of the whole ugly thing. But then what if you make a mistake on it? Then you get all three wrong. <laughs> okay, so if you math nine this on your calculator, you should get 12.135, and then if you bring the two over, so the answer is 14.135. Come on, by now we know code red. People, do you know the AP exam is on May 8th? Less than a month away. Yeah. Now, so did I tell you, I, I told you guys this on the first day of school, but you guys probably forgot. The day before the AP exam, Tuesday afternoon, from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, we are having a marathon in this room. You never told us that. Wait, on Thursday? You weren't here the first day of school, if you remember. Yes. <laughs> the AP exam is on Wednesday morning. 
This is a tradition. We've been doing this the last 20 something years. Marathon. The day before the AP exam on Tuesday afternoon, we have a marathon in this room from 3 to 6. We're going to do a multiple choice and free response, and then we're going to have pizza. You got to bring your own drink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, a marathon is just a, just like bad team. We go from three to six. Actually, one night we actually slept over. You know, one year, one you know we're not sleeping over because we it was like 1992 around there. We slept over. I was in the I was in I210. But because you don't get sleep, you get sleeping bag. You gotta get a good night's sleep. So so we tried it once. We never gonna do it again. <laughs> but on the course evaluations, almost everybody says that marathon saved my life. It went, took you from a four to a five right there. Just to like, just to tighten up all the things you're supposed to know. But see, this year, this year it seems like we're catching on slower than it No, I'm serious. I mean, when did I ever have to give a second speed quiz? Never. This is the first time ever. Everybody knows everything already. Everybody knows all the formulas already. This is the first year that you guys don't know. Like the one, the integral 5 to the x power. Everybody got that one right? Yeah. 5 to the x over ln 5 plus c. That's what I mean. Do we? Did, we don't even know that when I see dy dx equal ky, that's y equal y naught e to the kx. You only have to memorize one differential equation, that's it. See, that's what I mean. Okay, you know what? Look. Okay, you guys, are you guys worried about grades? Is that what you're worried about? Okay, here. If you work hard, I don't care what your grade is, you're not going to get lower than a B minus. You got to work hard, though. What's working hard? That means all you, it's done. All your work is done. Your homework is done. Some of you still get blanks. Do I have to mention names? <laughs> so last year, what I did, I took all the grades. I made the lowest one an 80. So whatever your score was, the lowest one, I curve it to an 80. The highest one, I think I made a 96 or something, and then everybody falls in there. But that's only if you work hard. That means the next time we do drills on the board, you guys better get all, you better be nailing it. And then what about the domain of the natural log one today? You got that one? I got that one. That's the one, Poncho. He nailed it, Poncho. Come on, if Pancho can hold the domain of natural log one. No, it's not something you deserve. Okay, let me pass back. Oh, that's right. I got I just graded the first ten problems. Yeah. What? First ten problems. Something like this and one the negative. Okay, now I'm going to stop. And if you get number one wrong, you're off to a bad start, Chen. The first problem is the easiest problem of all time. It's supposed to build confidence. <laughs> Some of us maybe need to come in for help. Okay, and since we're probably gonna, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep doing multiple choice problems to the bell rings. So this is tonight's homework. For the next two nights, I gave you complete solutions again. Yes. Yeah. So we are going to discuss one, two, and three on, or you're going to hand it in on Friday, 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 and then we'll discuss four, five, and six, or hand it in on Monday. You guys get it?
Each. He's killing me. He's killing me. I thought that was a mask. Okay, we're we're going to discuss multiple choice for the next 30 minutes. Okay, we are on 1998A. We, we didn't finish yesterday. We need to finish this. Okay, where did where did we leave off? Lift and separate. Remember that one. Okay, we're on 12. Yeah, this is 1998 part A. No, oh, like last year, they were kind of shaky, but not as shaky as you guys. <laughs> okay, number 12. Come on! If you have a piecewise function, how do you find the limit as x approaches to nothing? Now remember, in order for a limit to exist, it's got to approach the same thing from the left and the right. It's part A, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so all you have to do is plug in 2 into the first piece and 2 into the second piece. If they can't come out to the same number, that's the limit. If they come out to a different number, then the limit does not exist, right? So if I plug in 2 into the first one, you get natural log 2. If I plug in 2 into the second piece, you get 4 natural log 2. Are they the same number? No, so the limit does not exist. It's that simple. Just plug in the number. Why? Right, what are you guys doing? Okay, don't answer me. Okay, number 13, the graph of this function is shown as a vertical tangent at the point 2, 0, horizontal tangents at those other points. For what values of x is the function not differentiable? That means it has, a differentiable means it has a slope, right? Okay, well first of all, it's not differentiable at 0, why? No, because it's not continuous. Right? So zero is one answer, but it's also not differentiable at two because they told you in the problem. The slope is vertical. What's the slope of a vertical line? Undefined. Undefined, that's right. So this function is not differentiable at zero and two, and then you just pick out the answer, which is B. Okay, a particle is moving. Okay, this one you guys better get. When is the velocity zero? Okay, whose turn is it? Lynn, 14. Answer. C. Everybody agree? Yeah. yeah. Just, take, just take the derivative and we'll set it into the middle. Okay, number 15. Okay, if you missed this one, I'd be very upset. Simal. D. Everybody got D? Yeah. That? See, this is the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. You take, how do you take the derivative of an integral? You take the x, plug it in for t, and then you multiply it by the derivative of x is 1, and then you plug in 2, so you get the square root of 9, which is 3. Very good. 16, Louis. E. So cosine box times the derivative of box, that is correct. See how like some problems are super easy, and some problems are not. Number 17, Lao. Uh -huh. Okay, I don't know what the answer is. You guys concur? I think we better do this, because I remember doing this actually last year. Okay, which of the following is true? Okay, this is what the graph looks like. So that means you have to know the difference between f of 1, f prime of 1, and f double prime of 1. Okay, what is f of 1? What is the y coordinate right there? Zero. f prime tells you the slope. What is the slope right there? It's positive, right? Because it's going uphill. And double prime tells you the concavity. But well, we can clearly see the graph is concave down, so that means the second derivative got to be negative. So if you were to arrange this in order, this would be the smallest, this is in the middle, and now it is the biggest. Okay, number 18. Show. Uh, B. B, everybody got that? Yeah. The equation of the tangent line, you got to nail down. Number 19, Takushi. Yes, huh? C. C, so. Okay, I don't know. Let me look. 19, you make a number line, F double prime, and they told you it, so 0, negative 1, and 2, plus, plus, minus, plus. So where does it change the cavity at negative 1 and 0? So C is correct. How, how, come, how come 2 is not a point of inflection? 
because it doesn't change concavity. It goes from concave up to concave up. That's not a point of inflection. You have to look. So, you know, on the free response, what, what would be the reason for negative 1 being a point of inflection? Remember, you got a state method. Changes sign. Because oh, F prime changes sign. I mean, F double prime. That's double prime. Double prime. Okay, number 20. What are all the values of case which this integral is 0? Yamani. Just negative 3. Yeah. Let me think. Huh? Let me do this one. Okay, number 20. What does the graph of y equal x squared look like? Doesn't that look like this? Okay. So if you integrate it, what's the you remember the integral tells you the area between the graph and the x-axis. So the, can you see that negative 3 makes it 0? Because the integral from any number to itself is 0, right? But is there another number? And the answer is no, because from negative 3 to what? See, all of this area is positive. The only way the integral is ever going to be negative is if you get area below the x-axis. But the graph of y equal x squared doesn't go below the x-axis. So. so that's why the answer is only negative 3. You get it? You get it? Love? Because the graph is y equal. That's why you got to know what that graph looks like. Otherwise, you can't answer the problem. Oh, here is the thing 21, Rasa Oh, yeah. The thing that I didn't get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you see dy dt equals ky, that means the solution is y equal y naught e to the kt. Which of these answers looks like that? Huh? Which one looks like that? What? Which of these answers look like y equal y naught? That's a b. I heard a c. Y equal Y naught e to the KT. How come that, why is that so difficult to memorize? <laughs> if somebody told you, okay, oh, you're going to have a test next month and the capital of Montana is Helena, aren't you going to remember that? What? The capital of Montana is Helena. That's going to be on the test. Are you going to remember it? Okay, I'm telling you, when you see Y equal DY DT equals KY, that's Y equal Y naught e to the KT. Whatever. Number 22, Aranador. C. Everybody got that? I don't even know what the answer is. But okay, I see. Okay, 22. Here is the function. Sit down. X to the fourth plus x squared minus 2. When is f increasing? What does in how do you determine if a function is increasing or decreasing? Number. The derivative long. is positive. First derivative. So you take the first derivative and you get 4x cubed plus 2x and then you factor out a 2x and then you get 2x squared plus 1. Did I do that correctly? So when you make a number line you just get 0 because this is always positive, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is plus and this is minus. So when would the first derivative be positive? When x is greater than 0, that's your answer. When the word is C. Don't come in late and start asking questions. 23. Which of the following could be the graph of the derivative? Okay, I don't know the answer to this. Let's do this. We did this. Remember I gave you the graph and you had to sketch the derivative? Remember in the first quarter? Okay, if you sketch the derivative, the first thing, the derivative is the slope. Okay? The first thing you look for is where is the slope zero? There. There and there. What can you say about the slope over here since the graph is increasing? If the graph is going uphill, the slope must be? Increasing. No, positive. Positive. So that means over here you've got to be positive the graph. Okay, now the graph starts going downhill, which means the slope is? Negative. So we're looking for a graph that looks something like that. One that a, is that what you said? Like is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, that's correct. What a perfect graph. This okay, 24 is tricky. Kokami. Oh, you don't have it, yeah? Did you find it? Oh, you have this one. 24? Yeah, we did that one, right, Love? Was it D, Love? 21? 20? Yeah, the answer is D. Did everybody get it? Everybody got it. 24. No. 
It's cut off. We don't even know what number we're on. Huh? Everybody understands why the answer is 21? No. No. That's what I'm asking. People, if you don't understand something, just go over the problem, man. If you understand all the problems we go over, I guarantee you a five on the AP exam. Oh, you just find double derivative. No. You gotta go triple derivative. It says the maximum acceleration. Okay, if I give you a function f, I ask you to find the maximum and minimums, what would you do? Find the first derivative. You take the derivative and you make the number line, right? Okay. So they're asking for the maximum acceleration. You have to take the derivative of acceleration and make the number line for that. Yeah, two derivatives. Whatever you're finding the maximum. Okay, so here's the acceleration, which is 3t squared minus 6t plus 12. They're asking you, what is the maximum of this? Oh, so that means you've got to take its derivative, which is 6t minus 6, and make a number line. Opposite of root over 2n. So here's the derivative, 1 plus minus, a is decreasing, a is increasing. But there's a minimum at, at t equal 1. They want to know the maximum. Where, so where's the maximum going to occur? Look at this. Where, where's the maximum? At the end point. But Mr. Park, yeah, right there. It says t is between 0 and 3. So if you restrict the domain, that means the graph looks like this. There's end points. These are the maximum values. So how do you figure out which one is the bigger one? You've got to plug it in. So this is at 0. And this is at 3. Where, where, where do I plug it in? Into the acceleration, because we're finding maximum acceleration. So if I plug in 0 into this, you get 12. If I plug 3 into this, you get 27 minus 18 is 9 plus 12 is 21. What's bigger, 12 or 21? 21, and that's why 21 is the answer. 25? Chen? What, first of all, tell me what integral did you write for this? Um, the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared plus x dx. Is that correct? Yep. yep. Okay, so what's the answer? So the answer is if you take the answer. No, just give me the answer. A, B, C, D, or E. <laughs> Are you going to come after school? No, because I wasn't here. Remember, you gave this to me after it was... Yesterday! <laughs> I gave it to you yesterday. <laughs> Just do it in your head. Look, it's so one easy. One-third x cubed plus one-half x squared from zero to two. two. It's eight-thirds eight. minus eight. two. Two-thirds. <laughs> what? It's plus two. Plus two. I said D. Fourteen thirds. I said D. 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 Okay, twenty six. You are walking on thin ice, buddy. I'm your buddy. <laughs> you are walking on thin ice. <laughs> okay, now this one. When you have a theoretical problem like this. Most students don't like this kind of problem. Draw a picture. Okay. You did all of it. Okay. When x is zero, y is one. Okay. When x is one, we don't know what it is, and when x is two, y is two. So the graph looks like this. It's a continuous function. The equation f of x equals one half. What does that mean? F of x equals one half. That's like y equal one half. That's a horizontal line like this. Y equal one half. Has at least two solutions in the interval if k is what number? In other words, what does that number k have to be so that the graph will intersect the line y equal one half at least two times? Yeah, it's got to be something below one half. And so the only one that's below one half is zero. Because look, if if the y coordinate is zero here. So for the graph to go from there to there, doesn't it have to cross one half somewhere in between? And then to go from there to there, doesn't it have to cross again? But if this point is not below that line, then there's no way you should cross it two times. Well, not guaranteed anyway, right? In fact, what are they what what are they testing you on in this problem? Intermediate value theorem. There you go. Uh, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, because to go from one to zero, you gotta cross one half somewhere in between there, right? And then to go from zero to two, you gotta cross one half again somewhere in between there. That is the intermediate value there. Are you guys get it now? The intermediate value there. Okay, average value. If you missed this one, I'd be disappointed. Tom, what integral did you write? Um, one over two minus zero. Yeah. Okay, so you got the right integral, and how do you do this integral? U sub. Oh, your voice changed. <laughs> U substitution. If it's not on the list, that means you're going to do U substitution, people. So U equals? Um, U equals X cubed. Okay, so what's the answer? A. Everybody got A? Yeah. See how you substitute? And then number 28, come on, the derivative of tangent box is secant squared box times the derivative of box. Plug in pi over 6, and you get what? E. E, everybody got E? Don't forget to multiply by derivative of box, because I guarantee you that answer is waiting for you. That's kind of funny, number 28. How can this? That's supposed to be the hardest problem, and the problem's so easy. Yeah, anyway, every single year, the students tell me, Mr. Park, I finished the multiple choice in like, and I had 15 minutes left over or something. I don't know about this year. Oh. <laughs> but come on, Jaime Escalante students, what did they average less than three wrong on the multiple choice? Remember? Isn't that what they said? Okay, whatever. Okay, number 76. Couple people got this wrong. Which of the following is false? Wait, because it's not a maximum. Yes, there's a point. Look. Oh. Here's A. That, if you compare these two points nearby, that's the highest point. That's a maximum. <laughs> look, A is false because look, F is continuous. How can it be continuous if there's a break in it? Wait, so, oh, it's differentiable at times. Well, either that, differentiable is false also. Wait, what? <laughs> there's no answer to So it's not continuous or differentiable. That's right. Yeah, what? That's right. Which of the following is false? It's not continuous at A because there's a puka in it. Any kind of break, puka, asymptote, whatever, that's not continuous. Oh my goodness. Okay, now, what problems did people get wrong over here? 78, some people got this wrong. This is related rates. Okay, the radius of a circle is decreasing at a constant rate of 0.1 centimeters per second. As soon as you read that, you should be thinking dr dt is 0.1. In terms of the circumference, what is the rate of change of the area of the circle? Okay, what's the formula for area of a circle? A equals pi r squared. That's how you start related rates. Then you take the derivative with respect to time. A dt equals 2 pi r dr dt, right? Hey, that's the circumference. Oh, really? If you don't know 2 pi r is the circumference, just go home already. And then, hey, dr dt, that's 0.1. And there's your answer right there. Right? Oh, we're negative one. Oh, yeah, decreasing. Negative point one times C. Okay, and then number 79. A lot of people got this one wrong. Draw, make number lines. If, make, if you don't know what to do, make number lines. Go back to what you know. The graphs of the derivatives of functions are given above. Which of the graph has a maximum on the interval from A to B? Okay, look at F prime. This is the F prime. It looks like this. Ooh, woo. So if you were to make a number line for F prime, what? What would you put on the number line? Let's call this. I don't want to use A, B, and C because they have A, B. Let's call this J, K, and L. Okay, what would we call on the number line? J, K, and L. It's below, so minus. Below, minus. Above, plus. Below, minus. So F is decreased. Oh, I forgot to tape! Or, oh no, we are taping. Yeah, Thank you God I put it up. <laughs> Wait, but they can't see this side of the board. F what? They can't see this side of the board. Oh, well. Oh, too bad. No. <laughs> F is decreasing. So is there a maximum somewhere? Look at this. Is there a maximum? 
Right there in L, there's a maximum. You go back to the, yes, yeah, so this, this function has a maximum. Okay, now what about G prime? If I make the number line for G prime, what goes on the number line? Quick. Yeah. Zero. Below, above. G is decreasing, G is increasing. Is there a maximum? No. And then the last one is H prime. Make the number line. There's nothing. It's never zero. And the graph is always above, so it's positive. So that means H is increasing. Is there a maximum? No. No. So the answer is only F, which is A. You go back to what you know. Number lines. We know number lines. Now, number 80, what is a critical point or a critical value? Some of us don't even know what a critical point is. It's a point where the derivative is zero or no, it does not exist. It does not exist. DNA. Okay, so anyway, all you have to do is graph this on your calculator. This is the derivative. You graph it and see how many times it crosses the x axis. That's your answer. Okay, number 81, if you draw the picture, you can answer all the questions. What does the graph of absolute value of x look like? That's a base graph, it's a V, right? Okay, there you go. Is this function continuous at x equals zero? Yes. Is it differentiable? No, because it's a sharp point. The derivative doesn't exist at a sharp point. And then f has an absolute minimum. Is this the lowest point on the entire graph? Yeah? You can answer the question now. Thanks. Okay, 82. I, I noticed a lot of people got this one wrong. Okay, how do you compute integrals? What do you do? You gotta find the antiderivative. Okay, now what's the antiderivative of f? One half f of x. Okay, if capital F is the antiderivative, then the antiderivative is gonna be capital F of times one half. Where, where does one half come from? Because the derivative of the box is two, so you gotta adjust for it by putting a one half in the front. You get it? Just like when you have the integral of cosine 3x dx, is the answer just sine 3x plus c? No, you've got to put a one-third because the derivative of the box is 3. So same thing here. The derivative of the box is 2. You need a one-half in front. And then, if you want to factor out the constant, plug in the top number, you get f of 6 minus f of 2 is your answer. You have to adjust for the derivative of box. Otherwise, all the answers are waiting there for you. They know what in the state students make. 83, okay, whose turn is it? Lum, how did you do this problem? Uh, I, I don't know if I did it. Well, what's the first thing you should do? Okay. Plug in the number, but what happens when you plug in the number? What happens when you plug in a for x? You get 0 over 0. So either you use L'Hopital's rule or factor and cancel. So what did you do? Okay, so if you factor the, the bottom, isn't that x squared plus a squared times x squared minus a squared? These cancel out. Now can I plug in a for x and get something? Yeah, 1 over a squared plus a squared is 1 over 2a squared. Yeah. Factor and cancel. Or you can use L'Hopital's rule. Take the derivative of the top. Take the derivative of the bottom. 4x cubed. This x cancels into one of those. Now plug in a, you get 2 over 4a squared, which simplifies to 1 over 2a squared. Yeah, but Mr. Perth, what about the derivative of a squared? Isn't that 2a? No, it's a constant. It's, yeah, it's, it's a constant. It's 0. The derivative of a squared is 0. x is your independent variable here. So if, if, if you're confused, just factor and cancel. That's the simplest thing. Oh, 84, Waka Hero. Hey, this has been coming up a lot lately. Waka Hero, what do you do when you see dy dp equal ky? Go to the next problem. Y equals y not e to the kt. Thank you. Y equal y not e to the kt. Solve for k. K equals ln 2 over 10. Ln 2 over 10, and then you just do it on your calculator. Yes. 
Okay. So the answer is A then. Okay, let's do this problem. The population doubles every 10 years. So if Y naught is your initial population and it doubles, what does it become? 2 Y naught. Where do I plug that in? I plug it in for Y. So 2 Y naught. And it takes 10 years for this to happen. So you plug in 10 for T. The Y naughts cancel out. How do you solve for K? You natural log both sides. So natural log 2 equals the natural log of E to the gorilla is just gorilla. So K equals natural log 2 over 10. I study it on your calculator and get that. But then, of course, you guys in chemistry, natural log 2 is 0.693, yeah? Yep. So when you yeah. divide by 10, it's 0 0.0693. So. Whatever, just use your calculator. And then if you miss this trapezoidal rule one, I, I choke you. I choke you. <laughs> wait, wait, Mr. Spark, can you go over there and show us the video again? The what? Show the video. Oh, yeah, why are we doing it on that side of the road? I choke you. <laughs> <laughs> choke us for what? Suzaki? <laughs> trapezoidal rule, we did not. Come on, this is like second nature to you guys already. One half, what? What's the difference between two and five? Oh, one half, one seventy. You're not doing what I'm telling you to do. Three. Three. Times ten plus three. Okay, plus one half from five to seven. Thirty plus forty. Plus one half from seven to eight is only one, right? And then forty plus twenty. Just like on today's speed quiz. And then punch it on your calculator. Pick up the answer, man. Okay, 86. We've got four minutes left. We're still not going to make it. 86. Cross sections. Okay, what integral did we write, Chin? No? Aurier. The base? Cross sections are semicircles. So one half pi r squared dx, right? Okay, what, what is the radius of this semicircle? Uh, negative one half x plus four over two, so negative one fourth x plus two. Okay, so first thing you gotta do is solve for y, right? Yeah. Two y equals eight minus x. Y equals eight minus x over two. That's the equation of that line. So the length of the rectangle, the length of the rectangle is half minus one. This is the length of the rectangle. This is the diameter. Radius is half of that, so it's gonna be eight minus x over four. Right? And then you add up all of these. What's, what's the limit of integration here? Zero to... Eight. Oh, they gave it to you. Actually, they don't need it to give you. Just look at that, right? Now, I know you can compute this by hand, but we are on the graphing calculator section. Just math 9 it. Just math 9 it. Okay, don't make a mistake. Huh? You guys understand? This is the diameter of the diameter of the circle is the rectangle. So you gotta divide it by two to get the radius. You guys you made the same mistake back then. 87 long equation of the tangent line when the slope is one. Okay, what are the two things you need to make write an equation of a line? You need a point, you need the slope. Okay, now we already know the slope is 1 because they said f prime is 1, right? Yeah, but see, see, they're twisting it around. We need to figure out the point. How do you figure out the point, Lum? Um, I think I found the derivative. You think? <laughs> okay, yeah, you take the derivative because that tells you the slope and? Oh, and then you set it equal to y. Exactly. And how do you solve any equation on your calculator? You graph it. Okay, what did, what did x come out to? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7. Okay, three decimal places is enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then how do you figure out the y-coordinate? You plug that into the original function and the y-coordinate comes out to? 1, 1, 1, 5. And then you just do point slope form and pick out the answer, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so what's the answer? Uh, D. Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay, 88, this is the last problem. Come on, Teruya. I want to hear the words. Code red, there you go. So what you do is you integrate this. Now actually, 
You guys know how to do this integral, right? You can do your substitution, but this is the calculator section. Just do code red. And what limits of integration am I going to put on? 1 to 9, because that's equal to the antiderivative of this, which is capital F, capital F of 9 minus capital F of 1. But they tell you that this is 0, which is junk. So math 9 this on your calculator and add 0 to it. And that's your answer. <laughs> See, but I don't like 0 because the people who don't know are going to get it right. So they should say f of 1 equal 2 or something. OK, how many more problems do we have to discuss? Four. We'll do that on Monday. You guys know what's happening? What's happening? What's up, guys? <laughs> no. No, this is extended. What's up, Friday? Friday. Friday's homework is four, five, six. four, five, and six. No! Tonight's homework is problems one, two, and three of the free response. Friday's homework is four, five, and six. Okay, you know the free response I gave you. Tonight's homework is one, two, and three. Friday's homework is four, five, and six. See, last year, it seemed like at the end of class, we always had time to do drills at the end of class. There we go. This class, we're just scrambling to finish. Class works. Okay. Oh, Suzuki woke up. I saw you nodding off. You think I don't know this? Yes. Come on. Where is this? Oh, this is one of them. Oh, okay. Do your staff Oh, Remind me that I can give you the homework. Yeah. Oh. So, Louis, the only practice we're going to get is the day before. Yeah. And people are not even going to be there. Dave is going to play in a variety show actually because he's going to be on a trip. Kyle is going to be going to come back to Dave's Logan. Oh, and who's the other person? Uh, come on, we're going to make it to the new person so they got stuff. Oh, but it's really good. Well, as long as the main parts are there. Yeah. Do you have like other kinds of problems? This is a hard <laughs> just do those, no, just do the ones I give you, you'll be fine. No, you'll be fine. Trust me, you'll be fine. Oh my. You know, because after a while, all the problems, it's like, it's like the same thing. Like, you know, like today's quiz, so wasn't that familiar? I have today's quiz. Yeah, but when you see it like two or three times, then you're going to, yeah, because... There's only so much they can test you on. Okay. Um, yeah, believe me. I remember the really easy A last time, like the part A. So you see, like today's, we're, we're today's quiz, quiz part A was just, you know, F of whatever minus F of whatever. Like that. Use the data. Like that. Okay, yeah, like that. You got that one. Yeah. Okay, what is the meaning? Well, once you see that, that's you got to be thinking average value, right? Yeah. So this is the average of H, but H is the temperature, so this is the average temperature. Oh. <laughs> no, but like this one is always really easy. Oh, so you yeah. put A, whatever. So and then like, this one. Like, yeah. Did you use cold red? No. So this is equal. <laughs> so this is equal to H of ten <laughs> minus H of zero. <laughs> Sorry, H of zero is oh, I just oh, said it was H of ten. Minus H of. Because we're gonna plug Everybody in the top and the bottom. So it's delta T. So that what is that then? That's the change delta in T. temperature, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. H represents temperature, right? Yeah, if you have the temperature at 10 and you subtract the temperature at 0, that's the change in temperature. And then this one, well, if you're given a rate, this is the rate, right? Yeah. So you integrate it from 0 to 10, and that's how much the temperature changed, right? And then you have to subtract from Exactly. Yep. Is that what you do? And then you have to find the difference between that and... See, I don't know. I get the hard ones, and I don't do the easy ones. Oh, don't, don't worry. You'll get it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I gotta go rehearsal too. Mr. Park, can I? Can you get yeah, a video um, real quick? It's just like 15 seconds. I'm gonna ask you two questions. Okay. And um, this is for GSA, for the Gay Shared Alliance. So our first question is gonna be, what, what? do you like about yourself? Okay, we do. We do. I missed the first part. Okay, okay. So. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. We're still recording. Oh. Oh. Hello. <laughs>